Hey Floss Tubers, it's Katie the Stash Queen coming to you on this Sunday, September the 20th. I hope everyone is having a good stitchy day and had a good stitchy week. It was kind of crazy for me this week. Just a lot of stuff going on. A lot of things to do. I do have a holdover this week. That's okay. It happens. Oh, there's glare. Let me put that down until I need that section later. Um, I have a lot to talk about today. Um, first, you can see behind me, I got all the drawers done. Yay! And all this pile up here. This is my Mo's cottons over here, silks up here um, that I haven't sorted yet. Um, I'll show you guys what one of these drawers looks like. This drawer, I'm starting with Mo's because Mo is by far my largest collection of floss. Um, this right here is A through E of Mo's cottons. Ha! But I love it. I am so freaking excited. I cannot even tell you. Um, I did kind of a mock floss away storage in these boxes. Um, I would take a color, um, put a little, write a little card, what it was, who it was by, if it was cotton, silk, or other, um, and the name of the silk or the name of the floss, and then put what skeins I had of it in here, whether they were bobbinated or if they were just twisted up like this. Um, I'm going through, I've gone through, I'm working on J now to file away, and that's down here in this box. Um, I started with, so F, G, and H are already in this box, already done, um, and it's already getting pretty full. But these come out, these drawers come out really easily. Um, they look very packed, and they are very packed, don't get me wrong. Um, but I can go through them and switch through them pretty easily and find what I'm looking for, pull it out, put it back in. You know, I'm so excited. My intention is when I am done with storing all the floss, I'm going to use my um, label maker and I'm gonna make a label to put on the inside of the drawer so I can remember what's in there when I need to go. Don't let these fall out because I put it on an angle. And there, it just goes right back in. So I'm really, 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 really excited. Um, got a lot of floss to sort through. It'll be interesting to see just how much of this I fill up. But that is my next step in my organization. I'm getting through all of the floss, all the silks, um, doing most first, then I'm gonna hit what I had in my drawer um, and just kind of go from there. DMC, I'm just keeping in the bobbin boxes that they are currently in, um, with the exception of the DMC. I have a couple of other DMCs that aren't in bobbin boxes right now, and I'll figure out, I'm gonna do DMC last. Um, do I want to try to make this really primarily all my non DMC floss since I keep my DMC with me at least I keep it with me for now I may change where I'm keeping it all with me um, later but for now that's working just fine so I'm gonna keep it like that for now um, but yeah I'm really excited so you see all my supplies because I come up here for pretty much an hour a day at least turn on floss tube and listen to all of you guys while I am putting stuff away and figuring out what I already had organized and what I didn't and just all of that stuff. So that's pretty much my update on this storage thing. Once I get all of the floss done, meaning not just Moe's, but all of the floss done, um, I am going to, I'm not showing you the rest of this room because it's a disaster. Um, but I'm going to try to pick up the floor and make it so that there's all floor space. There's nothing on the floor that doesn't belong on the floor, which is a lot of stuff. That may mean things that don't necessarily belong on this, on top of this shelving unit may go up there for the time being until I find a proper place for it. But I can't bring any other furniture in here right now with the way this room is. So one step at a time. Um, got lots to talk about today. Got a few stash acquisitions, primarily flosses of the month, to show you guys. Um, I've got my week in review. Like I said, I had one whip that was held over this week, and that's okay. It happens. Um, I have my whips for the week, and my rotation is kind of changing um, based on some stuff that happened yesterday, but I'll explain that when I get to it. Um, I've got a an extra whip this week because I have a sal a stitch along starting tomorrow for the Disney Dreams group um, that I'll talk about. And then I'm going to talk about Stitch Mania's 2016 calendar. Um, I, Garrett and I figured out 
all the cells for 2016, at least all of the big, the two annual cells and the 12 monthly cells, plus a couple of their mini cells that are in there as well, um, that I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you guys about. Everyone in the group has probably seen me inundate everything. <laughs> I apologize to everyone on my friends list who got a thousand notifications from me on the day that I was doing all of the sales. It happens. I'm sorry. Um, but just in case you've been wondering if it's, if any of these sales strike your interest, if you're interested in joining Stitch Mania, um, I just wanted to give you guys an overview of what we're coming, of what's coming up for the next year. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm cutting back on my caffeine for part of the health related issues but I'm still having my Dr. Pepper on my video days, my glass Dr. Pepper with real sugar. Makes it a whole lot sweeter and more of a treat because I've cut out all other soda besides this. Real Texans may drink Dr. Pepper, but real Texans also take care of their health. So, stash quisitions. Um, first is one, I dropped, here's the story, I dropped, um, a bob and a floss in between the seats of my cushions of my couch, which is where I have a reclining couch and we were, that's usually where I'm stitching is in the reclining couch. And I forgot to open this. Um, and I dropped a bobbin between the seats. So I had to, you know, go down and find the bobbin because it went all the way down. And I found, oh look, I dropped a thing of delicates. Tells you how many delicas I had going that I didn't realize I dropped this. This is um, DB505. It came in with the rest of the delica stash that I showed you guys last week, but it's another 24 karat covered bead. So, yay! Then I got my Dragonfly Lotus threads of the month, which I'm having to put on hold for a couple of months while we save up for um, Christmas, you know, Stash Queen loves collecting her stash but sometimes you have to put stash on hold to make sure you have enough money to buy Christmas gifts for the little ones um which is fine I'll get back to it soon enough but here's the story um when I picked up the kids whatever day it was this week um the mail hadn't come I think it was Thursday the mail hadn't come by the time I got home from the kids from picking the kids up from school so my husband always checks the mail too when he gets home because I'll check it when I get home and if it's there, I let him know. But if it's not, he'll check it when he gets home to see if it got delivered. Um, and he came in the house and said, yeah, it, it got delivered, but there's nothing in it. You know, it's, which usually means junk mail, bills that we've already taken care of, the mail for the people who haven't lived in this house for four years. We got a flower delivery for the people who live in, have not lived in this house for four years this week. Anyway, random tangent. Um, means I got free flowers because 1-800-Flowers didn't come and take it back up even though we called them. Um, we, uh, so anyway, he said there wasn't anything in there. And so I'm like, okay, fine, no big deal. So the next morning, I'm getting ready to go bring the kids to school. And Paul says, I didn't bring the mail in yesterday because I didn't see anything in it. Can you bring it in when you come home? Okay, sure, no problem. What was in there? from the day before my Dragonfly Lotus uh, July 2015 club exclusive Friends of the Month. I need to reteach him that that is not a thing. Anyway, got the cool little card for the Threads of the Month. It's a little bent because it was bent in the mailbox, but look, it's all pinks. It's all pretty. I have gotten the Thread Club exclusive and the Mulberry Petite Club exclusive. And when I get back to um, getting these Threads of the Month, those are the clubs I'm going to go back to. But the, um, the Thread Club, this first one, oh, it's so pretty. It is called Exotic Hydrangeas. And it's a merino wool silk. Isn't that stunning? Love this color. I cannot, I mean, the black and the pearl. I have to find a use for this. I think it's just beautiful. Um, then the other one, which Coffee Stitcher showed, and I completely agree. This is Be Mine, and it's very much a Glinda pink. Very, very much. It's really pretty. So these are the two that we have in common. The ones that I get that he doesn't get. Um, this is the from the Mulberry Collection, the silk. It's just 100% silk. This is the Be Mine in the silk. 
which is paler, but it's really pretty. I like that very much. And then the last one um, is the Valentino, which is the other silk. It's just gorgeous. So I'll say, and I've uh, got more to show. So even though I'm, I'm putting my subscription on hold for a little bit, it's not because I don't love the threads and it's not because it's not beautiful. It's just, I have to cut back a little bit. I'm cutting back on various places for my stash um, for Christmas. Cause you know, you gotta do it. Um, but totally recommend Dragonfly Lotus. They're just gorgeous. And I'm gonna have thread envy when Garrett gets his. But the next day, <laughs> Friday when the mail actually came, I had my August Dragonfly Lotus threads in the month. So I got the other cool card for that one. I really do like that she sends the cards with a sample of the threads in it so you can remember what it was. So let's put these, make sure these are all back where they belong. Yes, okay. So first off, she sent something that I had ordered previously. She sent it with this package. And this is Snow Melt. This is um, Marina Wool and Silk that I had just ordered from her website. One of her lots. It's just really pretty. I like it. It's the blue and gray and definitely pretty. Um, but then the threads in the month. First one, this one is called Autumn Sunset. And this is from the Lotus Collections, the Marina Wool and Silk Combo. Look at that. Just look at that. It's gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful autumn colors. Love it. Then the other one that came from the Lotus Collection um, is Fruit Salad. Isn't that awesome? I really do. That's just really cool. Love. And then from the Mulberry Collection, first one is Wayfarer, which is a purple and gold, which is really cool. This is the silk. And then um, Quackenbush, which is blues and greens and yellows. Not it. I'm not sure if, I think I've got one more coming because of how the subscription worked, but if not, that's okay. It's all beautiful. Love these stash acquisitions. Definitely needs to be the new word we all use. Thank you, Tara C. I'll get these put back in the little thing. So these are flosses I'm gonna to have to put in the storage unit back here. So it's gonna go in the box of floss over here that has all the stuff right now. So that leads me into my week in review. Um, like I said, it was just a crazy busy week this week. Had lots going on, lots to do. Ah! And I'm dropping pieces left and right. Um, some days I got to stitch more than others. Um, all in all, it was a good week. No real complaints about anything. Um, I'm gonna use an order, sorry. Uh, so I'm happy, it was, you know, a good week. And uh, just having one held over, no big deal. So first piece from this week that I worked on was European Bistro. And I got more of the dark on this side. Filled in a lot more on that part. Just worked more on the half stitches. And I will say, I'm, I'm still staying on top of my um, uh, specialty, stitch, specialty Stitch September, which has all of the Chatelaine that I'm working on this week. And you'll see that on Tuesday. But it's going well. Toss, yay. Um, next was the Faces of John Elliott. I didn't get to work on this one as much as I wanted to. Just crazy busy day. But I got some more of her um, dress stitched in. Like I said, not a whole heck of a lot. But, you know, it is what it is. It'll come back up soon enough. One way or the other. I'm putting these away because again, like I said, this room is a disaster and it's just easier to do this while I'm talking with you guys. Um, next was Fall Fairy from Dimensions. 
Got some more of the orange half stitches in there. A little more definition to the leaves in her, in this part. Got some more of the hair done. So there's that one. This week is probably gonna be equally as busy. I'm volunteering a couple of days at um, the book fair for the school uh, this week. I've got, got soccer practice and Girl Scouts and all sorts of wild and crazy stuff this week. Like I said, I think it was the last video, maybe the video before, seasons don't affect my stitching, the school year does. Uh, next was the Fibery Friends Sampler from Frosted Pumpkin. Made a little bit more progress on this than the previous pieces. There we go. I got that heart up there done and the, those mittens that started on the shirt that's on the clothesline. Um, worked some colors and started some pieces down here with those colors. So yeah, slowly but surely going through that one. We'll see that one in a sal soon enough. I very much have had sals in the mind this week. Which you'll understand why in a little while. Then I worked on Friday. I worked on Flames of Desire by Leanne Seed for Heaven and Earth Designs. This is the powerful piece, the red piece on the powerful red fabric. I got all of the, sorry, use that finger, all of the color that I was working on done in that and in that section. So I've got, when I pick this one up again, it'll start on a new color for that part of the, that page. Cause I'm doing the color, one color at a time on the whole page. I know, I know, powerful fabric, but I love it. It's just, see, here's the whole piece of fabric. It's just so pretty. So I'm excited to see how this one comes along. Then yesterday started the new season of Doctor Who. Such a good episode. Oh my God. Cannot wait until next week's episode. Not talking about any spoilers, but I started my exploding TARDIS and I had gotten the copy of the pattern from um, Bella Stitchery Designs, I think is what it's called, but I ended up finding another version for free actually on Sprite Stitch. Um, and I liked the color selection where there are more colors in it and it's actually a smaller size than the other one. Um, still a full coverage, like a nine or 10 page full coverage piece, but overall a smaller design. And I think the color, I think the colors were defined better on this piece. But here's where I got to yesterday. I This is page one. I did all of the black, um, so all of the 310 and all of color 939, which is a dark, dark, I don't know if you can tell. It's a dark, dark blue, navy color, almost black blue um, on there. And you can see it's already starting to form shapes. Like here's one of the swirls. There's just another line that goes down in the piece. Um, I have never done a full coverage piece online. I'm doing this one online. I have, um, well, I won't say never. The Flames of Desire, I'm doing one color and going through and trying to finish all the color on the page. And that's what I'm doing on this one too, instead of going in columns. So, you know, I know you can see some of where it was carried under the white fabric right now, but this will all be covered up. And so I'm not concerned about it at this point, but yeah. So let me talk about this piece. Um, I started this for the Hoobians Unite Stitch Along that we decided to make in Stitch, or we, I decided to make in Stitch Mania, um, to celebrate the new season of Doctor Who. And a bunch of people joined in, lots of awesome patterns. Um, you know, we've got everything from, um, Lucas from Brochet doing, the fours doctor the fourth doctor's scarf on a cool hand painted piece of fabric that he did we've got several people doing um the clouds factory 12 doctors we have several people doing the exploding tardis um we've got one person and i forget who and i apologize who's doing a beautiful black and white like image of the 10th doctor going towards the tardis which is gorgeous um 
some people doing the don't blink patterns. I mean, there's so many awesome patterns that are being done. And really, I, we were all enjoying it. We were all posting yesterday and someone made a suggestion or someone commented that, I think it was Fiona, that commented that she was going to make this her Saturday night piece to stitch on while she walked to Doctor Who. And you know what? I thought, brilliant. Um, instead of just making this a one day stitch along, let's go all the way to Christmas Day for the Christmas special, because it's always on Christmas Day, um, and make this a stitch along for the entire season. So um, this is gonna become a piece that I work on every Saturday between now and December the 25th. Because the season doesn't go, I mean, the season will stop after however many episodes and then there'll be a lull until the Christmas special. But I personally am gonna work on this piece every Saturday until the Christmas special. So that means it's, I'm still doing a daily rotation, but this is gonna be, so I, be the piece that I work on every Saturday for my rotation, which I think is gonna be fun. Um, because it's it was fun to watch Doctor Who. I mean, they were doing marathons of Doctor Who. I think they're still doing a marathon today of Doctor Who. Um, so I was watching it and I was working on the piece and it was just a lot of fun. Um, it is going to be in my normal rotation too, alphabetically. But, you know, I just passed, I'm finishing up the Fs, so E isn't gonna come around again for a while. But if it comes up in the rotation while the season is still going on and while the cell is still going on, which it probably will at least once, um, I will work on it that day as well as just like my normal daily rotation piece. I'll just work on it again that Saturday. And then after December, after the Christmas special on Christmas day, it will just become a regular rotation piece. So that's my plan on that one. So I can't put that one away. I have to keep it out. So that was my week. Um, overall, I was happy with the progress. Like I said, I'm also still staying on top of the specialty stitch September one, um, which is going well. Um, I'm happy with it. Makes me excited to start my Chatelaines next year. Um, and I finally joined the Chatelaine group on Facebook and oh my god, that is a horribly enabling group. It's and it's just also I sit in awe in looking at some of these pieces. It's just like it's amazing to me. So all that rambling let's look at what my whips for the week are going to be. The one holder for this week was Flowering Crown by Just Nan, which is fine. I will work on this piece this evening after the soccer games. Um, and I'm doing this on 28 Jobelin and Avalon from Under the Sea Fabrics. And just a reminder of where I was. I've got that part of the crown going right now. You got that on there? Okay, there we go. And then I have my Elsa Needle Minder from Gina's Unique Needle Minders. So yeah, I'll work on this today. I want to get this piece done sooner rather than later so that I can hang it on my door, on the outside of my door. Or, um, sorry, nose is running. Ugh, cold. I woke up yesterday and my sinuses are just killing me which, you know, made having to sit outside for yesterday's soccer game oh so enjoyable. Things you do for your five-year-old son, right? Um, then Monday I am scheduled to work on Italian Vista from Dimensions Gold Collection. This, I think, is my oldest whip in my rotation now. Isn't that gorgeous? And here is where I am on it at this point. I've been focusing down here on the water. Sorry, you see what I'm talking about. Down here in the water area, um, because that's a lot of half stitches really. So I'll focus more on there again. And then I've got my um, cameo minder from Minding My Minders. So that's where I am on this one. I'm excited to get back to this one. This is the one I started this several years ago, um, but I started this after I'd had a lull, not the most recent lull, but I had had a lull in my stitching for a while. 
And this is the piece that got me started back up into it. Then the next one I have is Let's Do Wine by Ursula Michael. It's a fun piece. I like working on this one. And this one is being done on 32 Lugana in Sorbet from Picture This Plus, and I'm using silks from Mo's Sale for it. So really, I've got a lot of the bottle done. Um, I'm going to try to finish the bottle this time, and then we'll see if I finish the bottle, if I want to make a decision where to start next or what I need to do, because I'll, I'll need to pick out colors, because I only have the color for this part done right, picked out right now. And then I've got a minder, the Sherlock and Irene minder from Minding My Minders. So yeah, I like this piece. It went really fast the last time that I worked on it. These, the, it's kind of like black work, but not really because of all of the lettering, but it went really, really fast. So we'll see how this goes. The next one I've got is Letters from Nora, the letter T, the one piece that I'm working on for my daughter by Nora Corbett. And you guys have seen this piece not too long ago. I'm doing this on um, 28 Jobelin in Will-O-Wisp from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And really there's not a lot, a ton to go on this. This is where I was last time I worked on it. Hermione Minder from Delicious Threads. So we'll see how far I get on this one, but there's really not a ton left to it. We'll see where it goes. I like working on this piece. It's a nice piece to work on. The classic color works I'm enjoying working with. So then the next pattern, next two patterns I can't show you, or next two pieces I can't show you the pattern. One because I have it electronically, and one I only have the pattern because it was a club piece. But um, the first one is the Magical Creatures Calendar from Clouds Factory. I am doing this on 32 Opal Belfast in Diva from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here is, and I'm using silks from Mo's Sale. Here's where I am at this point. I'm still working on the border. I'm doing the border in Ramona silk from Mo's Sale. So I'll be working more on the border this time for sure. This is, I've got one more row above this part and then I believe and then this bottom row so we'll see how far I get these corners are gorgeous and intricately detailed but a pain in the rear to stitch and then this is my minder it's my blingy unicorn minder from Gina because this is a mystical piece and then lastly I will be let's see here, working on um, the March 2015 Sampler Motif Club piece from Carolyn Manning. And this is the piece that I am doing in 32 Opal Lugana in Ocean from Zweigart using Caesar Silk from Mose Sale. Originally this is going to be my background for my Needle Minder collection. My Needle Minder collection will not fit this anymore. <laughs> oh well! I'll figure out something else to do with it. But there's where we stand at this point on this piece. And then I've got a Legend of Zelda Minder from Minding My Minders. So yeah. And then on Saturday will be my Doctor Who Exploding TARDIS. So I'll just keep showing that on Sundays because I'll have worked on it on Saturday. So that is my Whips for the week, standard whips for the week this week. Now tomorrow starts just a basic stitch along in um, the Disney Dreams group. And I've only got two Disney Dreams pieces going right now, the um, Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. And since Little Mermaid got some love during the last stitch along, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna do Beauty and the Beast is falling in love for this stitch along for this week. And I'm just going to take it and work on it 30 minutes a day. Um, since I will still have the Specialty Stitch September one to work on too. But you know, 30 minutes a day gets you progress. So here's where I am at this point on my Beauty and the Beast. And then it's a bell needle minder from Gina. So 
I'll start this tomorrow for 30 minutes a day. Um, and then we'll see if I give it, I think it goes until the end of the month. Um, so, you know, the last few days of the month, I may just wait to the end of the month to show you guys, depending on how the dates fall and all that to show you guys where I get them. So those are all of my whips, everything I'm going to be working on. Yay! Now, this week, I got into a very organizing mood. It's, I blame part of it for this, I blame this for part of it really for instigating the, organi the organizational desires, but I get into those phases every so often. Um, you wouldn't tell by looking at this room. At work, when I was working, I was extremely detail-oriented and extremely organized. I could not leave for the day until my desk was organized and clean and everything was in its place. At home, I'm much more lax uh, in that regard. Um, but uh, I can get those phases every so often where I just kind of go in an organizing freak. And that's what happened earlier this week. Um, I sat down... Because, you know, October for Stitch Mania is the Raven Queen or any Halloween or Mira piece. Um, so I already knew what I was going to work on for that. Um, and I'll show you guys next week what I'm... Well, actually, I'll probably just wait till the first to show you guys. Um, then n November is the five Fs. F uh, family, fun, food, friends, and fall. And so I was like, well, why don't I go ahead and figure out what pieces I'm going to pick for that stitch long. And I went ahead and picked those out. And then I said, okay, well, Winter Wonderland is in December. Why don't I pick the pieces I'm going to do for that stitch long? And I went ahead and picked those out. And I posted it on the Facebook groups or for the Facebook events. And then Garrett and I have been talking about how we needed to sit down and figure out the sales for 2016. Now, I told you guys already, um, last video or the video before at some point, um, that one of the sales that we are doing next year is a year long stitch along that we're calling Chatelaine Shenanigans 2016. Um, and the intent is to start a new Chatelaine in January and then just work on it all year. Um, if you already have a Chatelaine in progress, of course, you're welcome to join in as well. I'm going to be starting two Chatelaines in January and then my third Chatelaine will also be displayed in that group every so often. Um, Garrett set up his uh, stitch along for the year, which is a Brooks Books stitch along. And this one is a little bit more a stitch along in the traditional sense of stitch alongs that um, Stitch Mania really hasn't done before, where uh, you start. the goal is to start a piece each month and finish the piece that month. Um, and of course, you're not held to that, but that's kind of the, the thought process because Brooks pieces are, are relatively small. They're detailed, but they're relatively small. Um, so a lot of people can, or the thought is, you know, if you wanted to do like all of her witches, you could start a new witch each month. Or if you wanted to do all of her angels, you could start a new angel each month. Or if you wanted to do the advent animals that she's doing for free or however you wanted to do it. It's all about Brooks books. Um, and so that one's also going to go all year long. Um, and I am joining in on that and I'm going to be doing, um, and I've ordered it already. I'm going to be doing the Wizard of Oz Santa for that stitch along. And my intention, the way I'm going to do it, and I'll explain this again closer to the beginning of the year, but I'm going to explain it now anyway. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to try to take a different section because there's so many pieces to that Santa. If you haven't seen him in the store yet, go look him up. He is gorgeous and stunning and amazing and Brooke outdid herself and it's awesome and I cannot wait to start on it but there's a lot to it and it's more than I know even if I only worked on it for an entire month I would not finish it in a month it's just there's too many details so I'm going to pick a little piece of each, like the Dorothy doll or the Scarecrow doll or whatever piece based on how the pattern is laid out and try to do that part each month so I can work on it all year We'll see how it works out. So we got those two stitch alongs set up and then we decided, you know what? Let's go ahead and schedule the rest of the year. So we have stitch alongs planned out all the way to December of 2016. Yeah. Good 
point of this. Um, well, it's really not a bad point, except maybe we're a little nuts, but we kind of already knew that. And I apologize for the glare. I have, I cannot see without my glasses, and I have got the Facebook events list up so I can go through the events and not forget any of them, so I'm sorry for the glare in my glasses. I'm going to try to keep my head up a little bit, so maybe it'll be not as glary, but sorry. Um, the good thing is that now that we're scheduled out through 26, the end of 2016, we're not going to be scrambling for ideas at any point in 2016. It also gives people who are planners um, an opportunity to start planning out their year for any stitch alongs they want to participate in in Stitch Mania. Um, our stitch along concepts are pretty simple. It's a theme, so you can pick any piece that you have that fits with the theme. We very, very rarely do like the Chatelaine or the Brooks books that are designer specific. And that's because we know not everyone likes the same designer. And we're, you know, we're growing in numbers every day in Stitch Mania. And we want everyone to be able to participate in as many of the stitch alongs as they can. So we figure themes work better for our group than a specific designer or a specific piece stitch along. Raven Queen is kind of the exception because it's Raven Queen. And we reserve the right to add stitch alongs throughout the year for the random things that pop up. August angst, Doctor Who, um, the Orange is the New Black stitch along. Random things we may pop up here and there because something inspires us to do it. We do reserve that right, but we have all of the monthly stitch alongs planned out. So it's a different theme each month. You are not you can do whips or new starts. You are not expected to finish a piece in any of these months except for what the theme is for December if possible. But um, that's, it's just for fun to go through and, and because the, the pretty common thread in Stitch Mania is that we all have a lot of whips going on, sometimes it makes, it, for me, I've got the daily rotation, I know what I'm going to work on, no big deal. Others, rotations don't work well for them and sometimes they aren't sure what they want to work on or they want to start something and they don't know when they should start it. These themes kind of help some of those people also figure out what pieces they want to work on that are already in their rotation or that they want to have a new start. So anyway, January, surprise, surprise, new year, new start. Um, we are counting if you're in the Chatelaine stitch along and or the Brooks book stitch along that any new starts you make for those can count for new year, new start. If a lot of people just start off the new year with a new piece and that's great. Um, we said also, you know, if you don't want to have a new start or if you do have a new start and you want to kind of challenge yourself, we said, why don't you use a new floss that you've never cut and floss type you've never used before. If you're not familiar, if you haven't used silks, try a silk. Um, if it's, a, see if it has a specialty stitch you've never tried before, try a new type of fabric. If you've always used Adem, maybe try an even weave. Um, you know, try something new. If it's a designer you've never stitched before, um, we're just wanting to, we're making the focus be on new. Now it could always be a, I love Joan Elliott and I want to start this piece. And so I'm starting this Joan Elliott piece using all the stuff I normally do. That's totally fine too. But those are just additional ideas if people wanted to go above and beyond just your standard new start. February is We Love Stitching. That is partially a Valentine's theme. But it's also stitch on something that you love. It can The theme is love. It could be a Valentine's piece, no problem. It could be a designer that you love. It could be a piece that you love to work on. It could be a piece you're making for someone you love. It could have colors or specialty stitches or threads and flosses that you love. The whole point of this month is to work on things relating to love. Pretty simple. March is, it's not easy being green. Um, we didn't want to do a St. Patrick's Day stitch along specifically, but we took the whole color green and springtime and, you know, all of that sort of thing to say that th that month work on any piece that has green in it. Doesn't mean you have to work on the green in the piece. You certainly can. I've heard a couple of people who have said all they will do is pull out their whips that have green and work on the green in the piece. Totally fine. It could be a piece that has green on it, and when you pull it out, you're having to work on colors other than green. That's fine. It's just the piece has to have green in it somewhere. Or, you know, you could always say it has green fabric. That works, too. April, 
is April showers bring May flowers and the theme behind that one is work on any piece that has uh, water or flowers and or flowers. Um, so if you have um, Flowering Crown, for example, is a great piece for that month because it's got tons of flowers in the piece. Um, if you have some of those seascape pieces um, where you've got a harbor and you've got water in it or, you know, to the pull out Tracy and Garrett's um, Chatelaine, Octopus Treasure Cave is all related to creatures who live under the water. So it's a water and or flower theme month. May is Stitch Mania 2016. 15 starts in 15 days. Some people are saying because it's 2016, they wouldn't do 16 starts in 16 days. That's fine. Some people are crazy like me and are contemplating doing 31 starts in 31 days. Don't know if I'm gonna do that <laughs> this year or next year or not. That's what I did. I did the more than 31 pieces this year. Um, but that's, the, the basic idea is 15 starts in 15 days. That was the original concept of Stitch Mania when Angie and Garrett and Amber put it together. Um, and we are keeping that. That is the crux of this group is, and it's the establishment of the Maniacs. In May, on the 4th, we're doing May the 4th Be With You. It's a Star Wars mini stitch along just for May the 4th. And the idea is to work on a Star Wars piece. Um, so, of course, because it's during the first 15 days of Stitch Mania, if you want to participate, the logical thing would be to start a Star Wars piece on that day. And there are tons of Star Wars pieces out there. Um, I've already, I have already know which one I'm going to start. I'm going to start one of the um, Padme ones from Fangirl Stitches, but there's, like I did with Princess Leia this year. But, you know, that's May the 4th be with you. June is the return of Wine and Whips, so just like it was this year, f pieces that make you wine. For good or for bad, but pieces that make you wine. Um, we've had a lot of people say that they could really use another Wine and Whips month, so we're going to go ahead and do that for June of next year. July is It's a Sunshine Day, um, and that one is basically any summer pieces, any pieces that have the sun in it, any tropical pieces. It could always be related to colors in the piece too, if it's not specifically a summer or tropical themed piece. Like the example that I'm thinking about, for, one of the ones I'm thinking for doing that month is my Rainbow Parfait from Glendon Place, which are which are orange, like sherbet orange and lime green and pinks and just very summery colors. Um, and I think reminds me of summer. So anything along those lines. Um, August is all that glitters. And it's going to be focusing on pieces that have metallics or beads and or beads. Either one or both is fine. Um, but all of the bling, the pieces that have the bling that month. Um, I know there's some people out there who metallic scare and who beading scares. It's really, you know, once you get started on it, I think you're going to love it. I think all of you guys out there can do it. Um, it just takes a little time. You got to be a little bit more careful, but the bling is awesome. Love the bling. Um, so the September monthly stitch along is going to be World of Pure Imagination, which uh, is any piece that you have that can either be like a mythical creature or, myst or a myth mythological or mythical creature. So your fairies, your unicorns, your mermaids, your krakens, for <laughs> those of you who have that kraken, pack kraken pattern, I believe uh, the lovely Ray McKenzie, I believe you have that one out there. Um, you know, anything, or from mythology, it can be, you know, Medusa or any of those type of characters. It could be a piece that makes you imagine you were off somewhere else. A, a beautiful um, landscape piece that you wish you were in. I'll use my example. My Italian Vista could work for that because it makes me want to go to Italy and imagine that I'm in Italy again. It could be a piece that works, uh, that is inspired by, sorry, my foot's falling asleep. I got to move it. Ow! Um, a piece that inspires your imagination from a story or a book um, or a movie or a song. Um, really use your imagination and any piece can fit into this month. Um, also on September 1st, we are going to have another one day stitch along and that one is going to be Catch the Hogwarts Express. September 1st is the first day of the school year at Hogwarts. 
And you know what? I may be 35, but I'm still waiting on my Hogwarts letter. I don't care and go back to grad school or something. Um, so the obviously that day it's going to be stitch on any Harry Potter related piece. Um, it could be a new start. It can be a whip, but, but it fits in with the world of pure imagination because really Hogwarts magic and witches and wizards and elves and all those things that are in that that wonderful set of books definitely spark the imagination so it fits really well with that month's um theme as well october is baps and smalls we love them all um and we're going to encourage everyone to work on either their biggest pieces or their smallest pieces or both um there are people out there who only work on smalls awesome pick smalls work on them there are people who love their have like a gazillion hades and tilting crafts and charting creations and all of those full coverage patterns going um that are the baps or that they just have big pieces that to them are baps it's kind of your own definition on a bap or a small but those are the theme pieces to work on um november is something old something new something borrowed something blue Yes, obviously wedding pieces would be appropriate, but the idea for something old is your oldest whip. Something new is either your newest whip or a new start, whichever one you want to do. Um, something borrowed is working on a piece that had some part of it given to you, whether you were gifted a pattern, gifted the fabric, gifted the thread. Um, some part of it was something you acquired because someone gave it to you. And then something blue is a piece that has blue in it, kind of like we did for the month for March with green. It's any piece that has the color blue in it. You don't have to pick all, you don't have to do a piece for all four themes that month, but it's kind of like this November where we're doing fall, friends, family, food, and fun. It gives a wide variety of people, of pieces um, and themes for people to pick from. So, you know, if you wanted to work on a blue piece all month, fantastic. If you want to work on your oldest piece all month, wonderful. If you wanted to work on a combination, which is probably what I'm going to do if I can, um, that works too. You know, whatever works best for you. And then December is the final countdown. And we are encouraging people to work on whatever pieces they have that are closest to being finished to see if they can, you know, if we can all uh, push out a finish or two or however many before the end of the year. Um, so that's really the only month where we're trying to encourage people to finish, but of course it's not a requirement. It's just pick whatever, and because what piece of yours that may be close to the finish may actually not be close to really being finished, but it's the furthest along of all of your whips. Whatever you want to work. So that's what we are looking at for 2016 in Stitch Mania. Like I said, we are um, reserving the right to add in random, let me put this down so maybe the glare won't be as bad anymore. Go back down, thank you. Um, we are reserving the right to add more stitch alongs in as things pop up. Um, I would not be surprised if there's another Whovian one next year, um, or other themes that pop up here and there. Um, we do welcome suggestions for stitch alongs. Um, we will probably this time next year be asking for ideas for monthly themes for 2017. Yes, we do plan on keeping going. Why plan on ever stopping? Let's just keep on going. Um, but you know, so if people have ideas, they are welcome to message me or Garrett, and we're happy to um, put those ideas, you know, in the box for when we need some ideas. But yeah, that's pretty much it that I've got this week. Um, <sighs> this upcoming week, like I said, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I will come back on Tuesday to do my update on Specialty Stitch September. So I'll show you where I have ended up on my uh, Medieval Town Mandala um, and show you the last piece that I'm going to work on for September. Um, then uh, I should be back on Sunday for my normal stitchy update. You may notice Sunday school started today for the kids. So some weeks I have to pick up the kids. Some weeks my husband has to pick up the kids. If it's the week that I'm picking up the kids, we both pick them up and drop them off today. David, we were a little bit worried, just like he was with kindergarten, was going to be a little bit hesitant, but he did great. He loved it. He's excited to go back. I'm thrilled. Yay, team. Um, but 
the weeks that I have to go and pick them up, you know, it's just, it's an hour long class after church and you know, it kind of doesn't make any sense to, because of where the church is and where our house is, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to drive out there, drop them off, drive back, just to, have to turn around and drive back out there and pick them up. So we kind of find a coffee spot or something and sit for a while. So on the days that I have to pick them up, my videos on Sundays will be a little bit later, more early afternoon than they will be in the morning. Weeks that my husband is picking them up, um, I will be more likely to be doing videos while they're gone. So it just depends on the week. So don't worry. I'm still doing my Sunday videos. They just may be a little bit later than what you guys are used to. Other than that, I hope everyone has a wonderful stitchy week. I'm still slowly catching up on my floss tube. Um, it's great company while I'm working on the organizing in here, I must say. Um, but I'm slowly getting there. I really am. I promise. I don't promise I'll ever get caught up, but I'm getting there. I'm watching. Anyway, I hope everyone has a wonderful stitchy week. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!